Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna to take a look at the 3D Warehouse. So this video is being recorded in August, 2023. And right now a new version of the warehouse has just come out. So if you're an existing user and you're watching this video when it's fresh and piping hot, uh, this is gonna be a what's new video for what's in the 3D Warehouse. If this is a little ways in the future and it's the only warehouse you've ever seen, then it's just kind of uh, what's cool in 3D Warehouse. And if you're watching this way in the future, like as you're, I'm assuming in a flying car or something like this, maybe this is history and this is what warehouse used to be. Lucky with the flying car thing, but let's hop in. Let's take a look at how 3D Warehouse works. All right, so I'm gonna pull up 3D Warehouse from within SketchUp. This of course can be got to during through a web browser. I can always just go to 3dwarehouse.sketchup.com. But inside the browser, I'm gonna click this button right here, which is the warehouse button. And that's going to pull up a window with the 3D Warehouse. So we're gonna look at a couple things in here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna spend a lot of time on this little, this field right here is like 90% of what warehouse is. Uh, as far as finding products or finding models. But before that, I wanna just cover a couple other things. Up at the top, I do have an upload button. So if I wanna upload a file that I have, and any SketchUp file, I can click upload and do that. And if I hit click on the name right here, I can actually view a couple things here. I can switch from light mode to dark mode, same on the web browser as it is inside of SketchUp here. I can also uh, view all of my content and I can edit my profile and settings. So if I click right here, uh, I do see this is my information about me and this is all all my my information that's going to show up when I post the file. Uh, some defaults, what do I want to be notified about? How do I want to use this, uh, the warehouse? And I have options on the side here where I can go through and look at all of my models. I can look at the materials I've uploaded. I can look at collections, that sort of thing. I even have a statistics thing down here. It does take a second or two to load the analytics, but that's going to give you information about how your content is viewed and downloaded, that kind of thing. So you can see here, got lots of views, got a couple downloads, and I don't know, like three or four likes. People take my stuff, but they're not gonna like it. All right, let's go back. I'm gonna just click on the logo here, take us back to the main page. And so we're gonna come back to this search. I just wanna scroll down a little bit. Uh, I have some basic information here about my content, the content I've looked at and my collections. Basically just some high level information, some high level data about the models that I have worked with recently. Like I said, the bulk of it is going to be right here. This is where I'm going to come in to search for files. This is where I'm going to, you know, hopefully find what I need for my model. So let's, we're going to start with a simple one. We're just going to, I'm going to type sofa. Some of you would call it a couch, but I'm going to use the term sofa and I'm just going to hit enter to search. All right, that's going to get me some results. In fact, that's going to get me 25, thousand plus results and that's under products so up here at the very top the first thing i have to filter by is products models catalogs collections or materials Ooh, materials so we've this is uh existing this was in the previous version but we do have products versus models products are uploaded by verified manufacturers models are uploaded by anybody since there's a big difference in the number of products for models or for products product models and model models. So I have, uh, yeah, here I have 25,000 plus uh, models from verified modelers. And then here under models, I have another 39,000. So lots to choose from here. I also have the ability to look at catalogs and collections. Catalogs are collections of products. So these are from manufacturers. You can see they're verified uh, names of actual companies that make things like sofas. Collections are user created collections, bunches of models brought together. And uh, you can look through any of these as well. You can see there's a lot of those 15,000 there. And then finally we have materials. So material is gonna show me any materials that uh, the keyword comes in on. So SOFA was what I searched for. And here I'm seeing names of materials that are connected to SOFA. So any of these materials I could just download directly right now uh, and grab those and use those in my model. So really nice way to, to zero in on a material. Sofa is of course kind of a weird term. This is kind of cool. Look at this, I got this tufted buttoned look. Uh, that's pretty cool that I could grab that. If I was looking for something more like, you know, etched concrete or uh, 
grass or something like that, clover, that might give me some more results beyond just fabric, which is, I guess, what I would expect searching for sofa. I do have the ability to filter these results. So let's look at models real quick. All right, 39,000 results, that's a lot. So if I come into filters here, first thing I have to search for here is category. What is this? Well, I was looking for furniture, so let's assume sofa, let's assume I wanna see something in furniture. Subcategories, I have what kind do I want? Well, I'm just doing this for a house, so I'm gonna say residential. So just do that and apply, and our 39,000 goes down to 11,000. Still, <laughs> quite a few models to flip through filters back up. See that information still there. File size. I have the ability to go in and say how big or small a file do I want. If I'm putting this, if, if I'm searching for a file right now, I'm going to assume that the file I want to import should not be, you know, hero, like renderable, beautiful monster. I'm going to say that I would maybe want that a little bit smaller because I don't, I don't need to fill my whole model with, with a huge high detail, uh, sofa. This, this not, I'm not rendering it necessarily like as the hero. I can also change polygon count. So I can come in and say, well, I don't, again, I don't need a million faces. I could, I could probably get by with like 10,000 faces, something like that. I might be able to do. Maybe we'll go 20. I don't know. Uh, usually you'd search by one or the other. I'm either going to search by file size or I'm going to search by polygon count. For me as a modeler, I'm much more concerned with polygon count than I am about file size. File size could also include things like materials and that sort of stuff. Whereas if I'm pulling something into a model, I'll probably maybe dump that stuff if I need to, but if the model looks good, I can work with it. I also have the ability to choose a type. So I can go, see, go all the way back to 2018 model uh, and then the supporting file types as well. So if you have a specific type, you can put that in there. And I can also search by, you know, do I want something that's a dynamic component or a live component or a geolocated? That'd be more of a building than a piece of furniture, of course. Just swinging on down here. I do have the ability, if I, if I remember that I saw a model, but I can't remember what it was, but I remember who it was by, I could type that name in here. And then again, some other stuff. Do you remember when it was created or modified? Anything, the information that kind of sticks in your head, you could come and search by. Once I have that information that I need there, I can click on apply. That's going to further filter my results. See, I'm down to 3000 at this point. That's great. That's a lot less. Uh, I could continue to kind of zoom in there and I search for an extremely vague term. So I would really probably want to put something in here like maybe a color or a shape or some sort of attribute that would bring this number down even further. Something else that you can search by, which is pretty nice, is by image. So I can click right here and it's gonna say, bring me an image, feed me, feed me an image. So I can grab this image that I downloaded, drop it right here, and that's gonna look for sofas that look similar to what I have right here. And you see, I came up with 27 results, much closer, much, much more refined search by using that image than by just typing an arbitrary or, or kind of vague term there. You can see I got a bunch of couches that look very similar to the shape of the one I uploaded. I, it's not looking for, you know, like this specific color set or materials or anything like that. It's more about the shape, right? It's the model. What do I have that looks like this? So much finer, closer than I was before. And if I look at some of these, I could actually see, so basic information here, how many megabytes is it? How many polygons do I have? And then I have some options here. I can click on it. That, of course, is going to bring it up. I can view in 3D. I can view in AR if I'm on a device that I can do that with. So if I'm on my iPad or something like that, I could actually view it in AR. I could download it, download directly into the model, or just save it. And then I have the other information about it right here. So you also have material count. And if I click on that highlighted, it'll actually show me the materials that are in there as well. If I go back to that list, um, let's look at one. Uh, I like that tufted thing. Let's see what this has. If I want to see the materials that are in a model instead of going in, I can actually click this little see materials button and it'll actually show you here's the materials that are in here right with right in the list right here. I don't have to actually go into the model and I could just download these individual materials also. See these ones actually have screenshots or pictures of the actual file that is then projected on there. Pretty cool. So really easy to get materials. So I do have two ways to get materials. I can search for materials like I did 
right at the beginning remember when I showed that search result from sofa or if I'm looking through models and I like the look of something I can just click right on the materials button and actually see the materials are in there Ooh, I like that shiny leather I have to get that later one of the things you might have noticed is right here for feedback did these results match what you're looking for clicking the thumbs up is going to let the the algorithm I don't know. I don't know if there's an algorithm. There's something behind here that does cool stuff. And it lets it know that, yeah, the files you gave me are definitely what I was looking for when I dropped that image into search. Once you found the file you want, of course, you can just click. Let's go grab the one we were looking at. Click download. In this case, yep, I'm good putting it directly into my empty model. I'm going to drop it right here. And there we go. At that point, I have that file. It's downloaded. And I'm ready to use it thanks to 3D Warehouse. That was an overview of the stuff that you, just kind of how I go through 3D Warehouse. Um, I would love to hear what you guys are using 3D Warehouse for. So leave a comment down below and let us know uh, what you've been using it for. Let us know what do you think of that. Uh, the image search is pretty sweet. I really like that. And uh, what you think of the other features that are in the new version. Love to hear that too. Uh, if you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified about them. If you subscribe. Most importantly, like I said, leave us a comment. Let us hear your thoughts on 3D Warehouse. Tell us what you like about it. Uh, we like making these videos a lot. We like it even more. We get to talk to you about it. Show you something you want to see. Thank you.